Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today I'm going to drop an extra video in because I want to answer a question which has come in from a viewer and it's on a subject which I rather enjoy answering. It's a, on the subject of wristwatches and somebody who's clearly beginning their own journey on wristwatches and seek the observations of somebody who's a little bit further down the path because that's all I am, I'm not an expert. All I can do is give you my own, or the benefit of my own experience and observations. Uh, and wrist check today, I'm wearing my Rolex GMT Master II Pepsi, which is a watch I often wear in the summertime because it's very comfortable on the Jubilee bracelet and the colors seem appropriate at this time of year when nature is coming alive with all of its colors, the jewels that nature throws up in the form of its flowers and its plants, the red and blue of the dial seems a good sort of uh, companion to that. So the question I have received is from somebody called M. Now M says, in the last couple of years, I have become very interested or maybe slightly obsessed, welcome to the club, in quality automatic wrist watches, Rolex in particular. And I've got some questions for you, if I may. Okay, let's take these one at a time. There are three questions here. Question number one. I did some research about the current scarcity situation and I couldn't get a clear explanation about how it happened and why it seems to be acceptable. How do you think we got here? I mean, in terms of revenue, Rolex is by far the number one brand worldwide for watches, yet they seem incapable of managing the current demand. At least that's how they seem to communicate it. But I can't help but think this is the result of politics or them delegating sales to partners and not accepting orders. I'd love to hear your opinion. Well, it's a good question, but it's one which I think nobody can truly answer with any level of accuracy. I mean, I mean, I think the reality of the situation is Rolex is by many multiples the most successful wristwatch company on the planet. They have the lion's share of interest when it comes to social media. Everybody talks about Rolex. When you tune into the TV, as I record this, um, Wimbledon, the famous British tennis tournament starts today and for sure you know when you tune into Wimbledon you will see all of the time related to you with Rolex being the sponsor for the timing on Wimbledon. If you look at various other sporting events, Formula One, whatever it may be, you know Rolex put their brand at the very heart of the sports which are very uh, fashionable, popular and watched by people who tend to have disposable income. Tennis, Formula One, to give you two obvious examples. So they're not fools at all. They understand the power of marketing. And when it comes to marketing, I think nothing or people react the best to things that they want, but are slightly difficult to get. You know, have you ever, think of during the pandemic period, okay? When there was this whole furrow about this, the lack of toilet paper, all right? You may have had tons of toilet paper in your home, but there was this general um, sort of opinion that toilet paper was going to be in short supply. It was something which people would have difficulty getting. So even if you had some, you went out to get some more because you wanted some, because you thought it was in short supply. Or I think most people did, whether or not you, know, you yourself fell into that category, but generally this was the opinion harbored by people. If something is scarce, we want it even more. And this is a very effective marketing tool that Rolex have employed over many years. When you look at their perhaps most sought after watches, the Daytonas, the Rolex GMTs and watches like that, they're stainless steel pieces. They have managed to whip up a frenzy of people, but people wanting these watches. The Daytona is a very good example. As a wristwatch itself, its actual practical use in the modern world is kind of obsolete. You know, if you want to time something, you get your mobile phone, you turn on the stopwatch element to it, and you can time something with absolute pinpoint accuracy. When you're using a, if you were to use the Daytona to do that, you know, the Cosmograph function of it, it's chronograph, it's not going to be as accurate as your phone. Yet you will pay 10,000 pounds for that basic stainless steel Daytona model simply because you've been told it's in short supply, it's highly desirable, and they whipped up this frenzy for it. So when it comes to why does you know, why are we accepting this scarcity situation when it comes to Rolex? 
it's because we've been slowly but surely brainwashed into this mindset that they're hard to get, they're hard to come by, and we want them more. So don't let, uh, you know, don't let the marketing overwhelm you. If they couldn't sell those watches, um, you know, because there were too many of them around, they would take a totally different approach. You know, look at Omega and the other brands. I'm sure they have the same manufacturing capability, yet those brands, Tudor particularly, Rolex's sister company, they're able to put a watch in the, you know, to release a watch and have it in the showroom for you to look at the next day and to buy within a very short period of time. Rolex seem utterly incapable of doing that. Or are they? It's just part of a clever marketing ploy, so don't fall for it. Uh, your second question to me, despite everything, I'm confident that I'll get the model I want. Well, you will. You absolutely will. You just have to stick it out, play the long game, build a relationship with an AD, and you know, you will get there. However, I, I digress. What do you say? I'm confident I will get the model I want since I'm a patient person and I have no issue playing by the rules. But sometimes I find myself thinking about the wearing of a seven or eight thousand euro watch on a daily basis. I mean, putting the pleasure and the utility aside, is it a smart thing to do? I'm afraid of becoming anxious about losing it or being robbed, and therefore no longer appreciating the timepiece for what it is. How was your experience owning and wearing several uh, such pieces over the years? And you are right. And it is something of an anxiety that anybody who wears a very expensive wristwatch will have to come to terms with. Because you're wearing a watch, particularly if you wear a Rolex watch, I'm sorry to say that thieves and criminals, they love Rolex watches because they could take that watch off your wrist, they could mug you, and that watch could be easily liquidated into cash within a few hours. You know, you can take it into a, a pub somewhere or such location and sell it to somebody, uh, you know, very, uh, very good return on the criminal's activity. If you, st shall we say, if you steal a 300 meter uh, Omega St uh, Seamaster watch, you're not gonna be able to turn anything like the same amount of cash return in anything like the amount of time if you steal a Rolex Submariner, simply because Submariner has a greater iconic status and it can be converted into cash more quickly. So it's very true, the point you make. However, I think what you have to do is become more savvy about where you wear your watch and how you wear your watch. Now in the summertime, and as I film this, it is July, believe it or not, but it's somewhat chilly and windy today. If I was typically wearing a short sleeve shirt, my watch is going to be on display to the world. Now, if I go to London or another big city, the last thing I would do personally is wear a highly desirable watch like a Rolex GMT Master II around the streets of London, wearing short sleeves, because I know there are gangs of criminals who are out there spotting such watches. I mean, I recently read some articles in the newspaper where people were uh, being robbed and they were having um, Tag Heuer uh, aqua racer watches stolen off their wrists. So watches which are worth just a few thousand pounds. So a watch worth, you know, 10,000 pounds, you can imagine the criminal is definitely going to be on the lookout for those and they're likely to employ a higher level of violence in order to achieve that watch because their return is going to be higher. So as a wearer and owner of such a watch, I have to be very careful. I have to be conscious of where I'm going, how I'm wearing my watch, who might see my watch. And this is an awful situation to be in because if you buy a watch because you want to wear it, you love it. You know, a GMT Master II is in essence a traveling watch because it is able to, uh, you know, keep track of two different time zones. Yet, I recently traveled. I, this year I've traveled, you know, quite a few times overseas. I didn't wear my good Rolexes because Quite frankly, I was afraid to. I was anxious that if I did, I would be mugged and I would lose my treasured watch, never to get another, because you know, if you get a GMT, you're never gonna get another one from the AD, unless you're very fortunate, because of the way that the Rolex scarcity situation works. So I find myself wearing my good watches only in my locality, where I know they're going to be safe, and wearing much cheaper watches when I'm traveling farther in the world. It's something you'll have to get used to. Just be aware of it, be conscious of it, make sure that your, your actions in life are commensurate with the level of security that you have around you. It's an unfortunate thing to have to say, but when you buy a highly desirable Rolex, maybe a Daytona, maybe a Submariner, maybe a GMT, 
you're going to have to be very much more security conscious than you would be if you were wearing an Omega or a Cartier. It's just the way things are. Uh, and I can't see it changing anytime soon, whilst the frenzy around Rolex watches continues as it is. Now your final question, uh, and you say here, my question may be dull, but I'm rather struggling to choose between an Explorer 40, the new model released in March 2023, and the Datejust 41, but with black dial, smooth bezel and oyster bracelet. Uh, and you, you say you used to wear an Archimede Outdoor 41 which is quite a, um, not a dissimilar looking watch, I think, to the Explorer, quite a, a functional sort of field watch piece. So what you've done there is compare two watches which are strikingly similar in appearance. The Explorer 40, stainless steel, oyster bracelet, black dial, very simple watch in effect. Uh, and the Datejust 41, but with, as you say, the black dial, smooth bezel and oyster bracelet, they're going to be very, very similar. The only really defining difference here is the fact that the Datejust 41 is obviously a touch larger and it's also going to have that Cyclops date function which dominates the dial. All right, the Cyclops, and I've got one on my watch here, it's something of the iconic Rolex thing, you know, um, and it depends on whether you like or require the date function or, the, or whether you want just the simple simplicity in effect of um, that Explorer 40 because both of them have very similar specs. They're both going to have 70 hours power reserve, they're both going to have a screw down crown for uh, 100 meters of water resistance. It's down to the aesthetics here. For my money, and I'm speaking myself personally here, if I was going to buy one or the other, I think I would be drawn to the date just simply because the date just is wearable in a few more dressy situations than that uh, Explorer 40. Now the Explorer 40 is there or thereabouts the same, but if you like the date and you want that sort of, um, I think the Datejust 41 may even have polished center links in its bracelet, which makes it a little more dressy, you're going to be in a position where it may be more wearable in a wider variety of situations. So as somebody who may just own one Rolex watch, that may be a choice for you because you can wear it pretty much everywhere. Whereas the Explorer 40, much more akin to your Archimede Outdoor 41 watch, if that's something you're wedded to, the aesthetic of that piece, maybe the Explorer 40. But really and truly, when it comes to the performance and the capability of these two watches, they're cut from the same cloth. You know, they're going to be more or less identical. It's a matter of personal preference. For me, I do like the old Datejust myself, but I actually own an Explorer myself too. So they are quite interchangeable. But for me, Datejust tips it just because of that little bit more functionality. A little bit more expensive mind as well. So you've got to take that into account. So there we go. I hope, M, you have found that rather useful or just my observations on it have helped you in your own watch journey. If you have enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, subscribe. You can support the channel by buying me a coffee or even becoming a patron and benefit from the additional videos I make for my patrons over there on that channel. And you see my patrons' names at the end of this video too. So as ever, go into the world with pride and passion for the watch on your wrist. And I will see you again very soon.